that you're working in our situations. Amen. Amen. That's what, that's what faith really is all about. We believe that God is working in our situation, even though we may not see things changing, we may not feel any different, but we believe that God is working in unseen realms. Amen? That's faith. That's what it means to be a person of faith. We do not get discouraged by what we see, our circumstances. We're not put out. We're not put down. But we say, Lord, I'm trusting you, God. I'm trusting you. And that's why we gather here on a Sunday morning to worship the Lord. And we lift our hands and, and we surrender ourselves to the sovereignty of God and believing that, Lord, everything in my life, Lord God, you're in control. In my life is not spiraling out of control. I am not a victim of circumstance. Man is not doing anything to me, Lord. Lord, my times are in your hands, Lord, and you're in control. That's what faith is all about. Amen. That's why we can rejoice in the midst of the storm. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. If you're new to our church, welcome. My name is Greg Johnson. I serve here as lead pastor. So glad that you're here today. Before you're seated, go ahead and shake hands. Give somebody a hug. Tell somebody, God bless you. Great to see you. Tell somebody, man, you look great today. If you're joining us at Mission Church Online, God bless you. It is so good to have you with us as well today, worshiping the Lord, studying the Word of God. God bless you. Amen. All right, well, grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, we are going to be today in chapter 27, Acts chapter 27. We're almost done with our series on the book of Acts. And uh, go ahead and get there to chapter 27 while you're turning there. Men, Pastor Dylan mentioned it today, 4 o'clock, we have a powerful men's gathering and uh, we really want to encourage you to come on out. Dave Stoughton is going to be our speaker. If you don't know Dave, um, he is a, a man who knows the Word of God, loves the Lord, has a burden for men and for families, and I know that God has put a word on his heart for me and, and for you. So, so gentlemen, you need to be out here today at, uh, at 4 o'clock and God is going to speak into your life. All right, Acts chapter... 27. Are you blessed today? All right. We are talking today about surviving storms and shipwrecks. Surviving storms and shipwrecks. Verse 7. When we had sailed slowly many days and arrived with difficulty off Snidus, the wind not permitting us to proceed, we sailed under the shelter of Crete off Salmone, passing it with difficulty. We came to a place called Fair Heavens, Havens near the city of Lasea. Now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them. That means that when the, the Day of Atonement that feast, that fast was over. That signified now the entry into winter, which was a dangerous time to be sailing. Verse 10, saying, men, I perceive, so Paul is advising them, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also, if by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, opening toward the southwest and northwest, and winter there. So Father, help us today, God, for those of us here today, that are in a season of storm, that have even, Lord, experienced shipwreck in their lives, where, Lord, it seems things are coming apart, where the wheels are coming off their marriage or their family or their career or their finances, Lord. Today, Lord, speak to us through the power of Your Word. Let it be alive. and Let Your Spirit minister into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So the Apostle Paul here is in the custody of a Roman centurion named Julius. And uh, Julius's job was to get Paul to Rome. And so they found a ship. They set sail for Italy where Paul is to appear before Nero for the charges that have been levied against him in Jerusalem. And we know that This is God's will for Paul. We know that getting on a ship and going to Italy is God's will. Because in verse 23, we'll read later on, it says that an angel appeared to Paul as he testifies and told Paul that he must appear before Caesar. So he's in the will of God. Now isn't this an interesting thing? Paul is in the perfect will of God, moving forward in God's plan. But on the way, he encounters contrary winds, and a violent storm. It tells us that even when you or we are in God's will, there will be storms that we're going to face. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. In fact, the old saying says that um, right now, everyone here is either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or about to go into a storm. You may not know that there is a storm coming your way. You say, well, I don't receive that, Pastor Greg. Well, you cannot receive it, but sometimes in the will of God, you will encounter contrary winds and a storm. Amen? Amen. But Paul's journey teaches us that no matter what storm you are in, no matter what shipwreck you may face, God wants to be with you on that ship, in that storm and he wants to bring you through isn't that good news amen but there's a couple of lessons for us uh, to take from this story for surviving storms and shipwrecks the first one is uh, in verse 9 we read it there verse 9 the first lesson is this be sure that you have a paul on your boat And it's not enough to have a Paul on your boat. You need to listen to him. Verse 9 and 10 says that Paul warned them. He said, disaster, this voyage will end. He says, if you keep going in this direction, you're going to face catastrophe. Paul was the man on the boat who heard from God and offered counsel and offered guidance and offered warning. Make sure that your boat has a Paul on it. Because we need voices speaking into our lives that will help us hear from God and discern the Holy Spirit and avoid shipwrecks. Listen, just because you're in a storm doesn't mean you have to encounter a shipwreck. Amen? Okay? You can be in a storm and avoid a shipwreck, but you've got to listen to who? You've got to listen to the Paul on your boat. Okay? Now what does that mean? What's the Paul on your boat? Well, number one, it's the Word of God. The Word of God. Amen. You have got to have, we need to have the Word of God active on our boat. The number one reason why people have shipwreck in their lives, in their marriage, in their family, in their finances, in their health, is because they don't know the Word of God. There was a recent study conducted from the Center for Bible Engagement out of the Assemblies of God, and it revealed that those who read the Bible, listen to this, those who read the Bible at least four times a week are less likely to engage in behaviors such as gambling, pornography, getting drunk, and sex outside of marriage. These are shipwrecks, those behaviors. If you're involved in those behaviors, you are heading for a shipwreck. Gambling, pornography, alcohol, sex outside of marriage. Everybody say shipwreck. Right? And people who are encountering those kinds of shipwrecks, they all have one thing in common. They neglect to study the Word of God. I'm talking about Christians. I'm I'm talking about studies among born-again evangelical church members, right? When you're in the Word, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit will speak to you. 
The Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will warn you out of the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will show you things that you need to see, but you need to have the Word of God on your boat. And if you don't have the Word of God on your boat, you'll head directly into a storm and eventually a shipwreck. And it's not only essential to read the Word. You, we all need to have others on our other sources of the Apostle Paul on our boats to speak the Word into us. We need pastors and spiritual leaders, spiritual mentors, people that we recognize God has placed in our lives to speak into our lives the will of God. We need people that will speak truth to us that we don't want to hear. Hello? For the very reason that we don't want to hear it. Do you ever notice that when, when you don't want to hear something, you tend not to pay any attention to it? But we need people in our lives who will stop us, who will look us in the eye and say, there's something you need to hear. We need people in our lives who will say, do you really think that it's wise for you to be going to those places? Do you really think that it's smart for you to be hanging out with those people? Do you really think it's a good thing for you to be doing those things that you're doing? We all need people in our lives that will speak those things to us. Yes? Amen. Right? Pastors, spiritual leaders, mentors, parents, young people, parents. Your parents are the Apostle Paul on your boat. God has given you, your parents, to guide you. Do not look at your parents as obstacles in the way of your fun. Look at them as guardrails guard on your highway to prevent you from going over the cliff. Your parents know some stuff. Because believe it or not, they were once young like you are. I know it was a long time ago. I know they've lost their cool. I know they're, you know, I know they dress kind of strange, you know. I know they talk kind of funny, you know, they just don't understand culture. That's okay. They understand life. They understand life, right? And your parents are going to tell you things you don't want to hear. And you need to recognize that this is not just some old fuddy-duddy. Everybody say fuddy-duddy. Just because it's a cool word to say. Fuddy-duddy, right? They're, they're, they, listen, these are people that God has put in your life. Because God sees that you're heading in a direction. You're connecting yourself with people that are unhealthy. You're going to places that are going to, that are going to tear you down. And your parents recognize it. Because they've been there and they lived it. And they love you. And they want to deliver you from a shipwreck. Right? They know there's, there are rapids ahead. Everybody say rapids ahead. They know there's a waterfall ahead. They know they've, they've, they've already sailed down that territory. They've been there. And they've come to you now. And they're saying, if you keep going. Listen, the Lord is speaking to some young, some young adults right now. You've got parents. You're in conflict right now with your parents over an issue. They're telling you no. And you're starting to resent their no. And I'm telling you that if you will abide under their no, it will be life for you. It will be life. Well, I'm 21. I'm 22 years old. I don't care if you're 47. Your parents will always be older and wiser. Amen? All the parents said amen to that, right? They know what's ahead. Listen to them and deliver your soul. Hallelujah. That's a word from the Lord for somebody. All right? Amen. Let me give you this real quick. What's even worse... Then not having a pole on your ship is bad enough to not have a pole, a pole on your ship, but then it's even worse when you invite a Jonah onto your ship. Think about that for a moment, okay? Because you know the story of Jonah. Jonah was running from God in rebellion against God, got on a ship, and then what happened? Because they put a, re a rebel, a man running from God, rebelling against God on their ship, they encountered a storm. Right? Listen, in your, it'll only take one Jonah to sink your ship. That's all it takes. One wrong person in your life speaking into you, trying to influence you, trying to get you to do things that you know you shouldn't be doing, and that Jonah will take you down. Okay? And the only way to deliver your soul 
from the peril of a Jonah is to throw him over the side. Read the story. I'm just telling you the word of God. Well, Pastor Greg, that doesn't sound very compassionate. Don't worry. God's prepared a fish to swallow him up. Don't worry about it. God will take care of that Jonah. Don't worry about the Jonah, okay? God will work it out in that Jonah. You just got to throw that Jonah overboard and deliver your soul. Amen? Get that guy out of your life. Get that woman out of your life. Get that person out of your life because they will sink your ship. Amen? We could stop right there and have an altar call, and it would, but, but we're not because I still have 15 minutes and 40 seconds. Acts 27 verse 13 says, When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire, putting out to sea, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called a Euroclidon. So when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind, we let her drive. And running under the shelter of an island called Claudia, we secured the skiff with difficulty. Verse 18. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. Everybody say, lightened the ship. On the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Number two, if you're going to survive a shipwreck, you've got to lighten the ship. You've got to lighten the ship. I already said you've got to throw Jonah over, this, over the side. But there might be some other things that you've got to remove. You've got to remove from your life. So they threw everything that was weighing the ship down over the side. They got rid of it. And by doing this, they were buoyed. The ship rode higher on the waves and didn't get grounded on the bottom, right? Sometimes God allows us to go through storms to show us the things in our lives that are sinking us. The things, the places, the people that are dragging us down. So we've got to discern what's dragging us down and cast it aside. Hebrews 12.1 says, Lay aside the sin, the weight that does so easily beset us. Amen? Let me get a little personal now. Can I do that? I'm going to do it anyway. Pastor Chris said I can, so. Some of us may be heading for a shipwreck physically. Physically. We need to throw some stuff, what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're smoking. Hello? Amen? Need to throw it over the side. You need to lighten the ship. I saw a friend last week. I was speaking at a, at a minister's luncheon up in Schenectady, and I saw a friend. I hadn't seen him for a while, and he's in his, his mid-60s, and, and I said, he's a pastor, and, and I said, I said, bro, you look, you look good. I mean, he'd really trimmed, and he looked fit. I said, you look, you look really good. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I realized when I got into my mid-50s how unhealthy I was becoming. He said, I was overweight, said I couldn't even walk up the steps without getting winded, right? And he said, I, needed, I realized that I needed to make some serious changes in my life. So he changed his diet, he started to exercise, and he made investments in himself physically, and now in his mid-60s, he's doing great. He's healthy. How many want to be healthy in their mid-60s? How many have said goodbye to the mid-60s many years ago, and now you're looking at the mid-80s, and you're like, okay, how many want to feel good in their mid-80s? Anybody here? Okay. Amen? Right? So that means you're going to have to lighten your ship now. You're going to have to, listen, I don't want, listen, I love you, and I don't want to have to do your funeral this year. I don't want to hear that you're in the hospital this year. It's time to invest in our lives physically. Amen? Some of you are heading for a shipwreck emotionally. You need to throw some emotional baggage over the side. Holding on to unforgiveness, holding on to bitterness, holding on to an offense that occurred years ago. Still stuck there. Some of you watching the stream online haven't been to church for years because somebody offended you in a church and now all churches are bad and all pastors are bad and you won't go back to church. And in the name of Jesus, you need to throw that stuff over the side and get back to church. Because the enemy is ripping you up. Some are heading for a shipwreck spiritually. you got people in your life, places you're sailing into, things you are doing that are dragging you down spiritually. It's not enough to throw Jonah over the side. you got to throw some of Jonah's stuff over the side with him. Hello? 
Storms will come. But listen, you can ride high in the storm. You're going to go through storms. I don't know about you, but I want to ride high in the storm. I don't want to be bogged down, bottoming out, dragging bottom in the storm, right? I don't want to be weighed down with stress and anger and worry, right? I want to make sure that Jesus is on my boat and that my eyes are on Him. And I'm not listening to Jonah, but I'm listening to Paul. Hallelujah. You could travel much lighter through the storm with confidence and assurance when you know that God is with you. There's nothing greater than knowing you are right with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts 27, verse 20. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beat on us. Oh, did you get that? Paul's in the will of God, and he says the tempest beat on us. Do you ever feel like that? You're in the, you know you're serving God. You know you love Jesus. You're doing everything you know. But yet the tempest is beating on your life. You're not alone. All hope that we would be saved was finally given up. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood, look at this, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me. (laughs) I told you. I told you so. All right, we'll let you have that one, Paul, right? Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you, take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Because he served God and because he heard from God, he was able to stand amidst the confusion and the distress and the discouragement and say, listen to me, I have heard from God. I've got a word for your life. Don't you want to be that person who can stand up in the middle of somebody's storm, in the middle of somebody's shipwreck and say, you know what? God spoke to me about you. Hallelujah. God's going to bring you through this. That's the guy that I want to be. Do not, he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. What does that mean? Always have hope in the storm. Always have hope. There's always hope when Jesus is on your boat. He doesn't take the storms away. Amen? but he promises to be with you in the storm. We say things like, we sang it this morning, he causes all things to work together for the good. We say things like, they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Those are not cliches. Those are truths. Those are biblical truths that are found in the Word of God that we can reassure ourselves that when we are called according to His purpose, when we are aligned with the will of God, we can know that He is working all things. The lightning, the thunder, the rain, the waves, everything is all part of God's plan. And He's working it together to deliver you to the destination that He has appointed for you. For Paul, it was Rome, Italy, right? I don't know where it is that God's taking you in your life, but when Jesus is on your boat and you know you're serving God, you can have hope. Can you just say that? Have hope. Hope, the word hope means the expectation of good. That's why we say the best is yet to come. When Jesus is on your boat, you can expect good things to come out of your storm. Amen. Be that person on the boat like Paul who could point people to the Lord in the midst of the storm. People will never watch you as close as they do when they know you're going through a storm. It's true, isn't it? Your friends, your co-workers, your family, they know you're going through the storm, and they're going to be watching you to see if everything you believe about God is really true. And in the midst of that storm, you want to be able to be like Paul, who stands up and says, I'm trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be that person, listen, don't be that person who, when they have a bad day, needs to make sure that everyone else is having a bad day. You know anybody like that? No pointing. Don't point. Don't point to your wife. Don't do it. (laughs) But don't be like that person 
Come on, you know that person who when they're having a bad day, they need to make sure you're having a bad day too. They just got to ruin it. Be a person of faith like Paul who reminds everyone and even himself or herself what the Word of God says. That the God I serve is a very present help in times of trouble. That the God I serve will be that fourth man in my fire. I may go through a fire, but he's going to be in it with me and I'll come out of it without the smell of smoke on my clothes. Hallelujah. Right? Amen? Be that person who says, I may be in a storm, but you know, and my boat might, it might look like my boat is about to sink, but I want you to know there's an angel on my boat. Hallelujah! There's an angel on my boat. Amen. And remember this, as encouraging as Paul was, he did say, listen, you're going to survive, but, everybody say but, (laughs) I got good news and bad news. The good news is you're going to live. The bad news is we're going to run aground. The ship is going to wreck. Amen. The ship is going to wreck. I don't know why the the ship in your life might wreck. It might be a consequence of bad decisions you made in your past. But you know what I'm glad about? I'm glad that the, the sovereignty of God, the wisdom of God, has already factored in my stupidity. Amen? Is anybody glad for that? Because, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, I just made so many mistakes, and this is a, I just did this to myself. And Listen, do you think that your stupidity caught God by surprise? I want you to know something, that the sovereignty of God, the divine wisdom of God, has already factored in your stupidity, and He still has a plan. Now, you may run aground on a certain island, but God is still in control. Hallelujah. Amen. So be real. Right? We don't give a false hope. We don't say, well, Jesus will just take away all your problems. No. No. In fact, sometimes when you receive Jesus, you end up with more problems. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Right? Things get a little harder. They get harder on the job. The opposition, they get harder at home because Jesus said people in your own house are going to hate you. Right? Brothers, sisters will turn against you. Jesus didn't promise, bring me into your life and you'll just be happy, go lucky, and you'll never... No, Jesus said, listen, understand... When you receive me into your life and you put that cross on your back and you start walking with that cross, it's going to be hard. But be of good cheer. Jesus says, I've overcome the world and I'll be with you every step of the way. Amen. Verse 27. Now when the 14th night had come, two weeks, two weeks in a tempest. As we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they took soundings again and found it to be 15 fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. The next thing we learn when you're in a storm, drop your anchors and pray for day to come. (laughs) Hebrews 6.19 says, we have this hope. We have this hope. We have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. What is the anchor of our soul? The scripture goes on to say, verse 20, even Jesus. Jesus is the anchor of our soul because he's become our great high priest before whom we may come boldly into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help in our time of need. Amen. Drop your anchor and pray for day to come. Hallelujah. Remind your soul who is in control and pray to the one who controls the storm. Don't forget to pray. That's basically what I'm saying here. In your storm, don't forget to pray. Right? Don't complain. Okay? It's nice to call people on the phone, get encouragement, get somebody at church to pray for you. That's fine. But you know what? There's no better person to pray for you than you. Because something happens on the inside of us when we pray right? There's an internal correction. There's a realignment of our our, our inner compass, right? There's a refocusing of our spirit on, on the source of our joy and our provision. Something happens when we pray that does not happen when we don't pray. And it begins in us. And when you're in a storm, a lot of times the first thing that needs correcting is your own soul. Because we get discouraged, we get worried, we get anxious. But you know what? When you get before God, you open His Word, you kneel before Him, and you start crying out to God, something happens on the inside of you. Right? So whatever your storm, listen, mom and dad, if you have a wayward child, son or daughter who's a prodigal, don't stop praying. 
If you're sick today, if, you're, if you have a sickness or health or something, infirmity in your household, don't stop praying. Right? If you need a job, if you're between jobs, you're going through a financial struggle right now, don't stop praying. Because the devil wants you to stop praying praying and because he'll try and get you to believe that God doesn't hear you he'll try to get you to believe that God doesn't care about you he'll tell you that that what good is prayer nothing's changing but I'm going to tell you that the devil is a liar I'm reminding you the devil is a liar hallelujah because when we pray all of heaven goes into motion on our behalf you may not see it you may not feel it you may not hear it you may not experience it right now in your circumstance but that's what faith is all about Faith is not what happens when you've got money in your pocket, money in your bank account, and your body's feeling fine, right? That's, when, that's not faith. Faith is what happens when you have no money in your pocket, and you can't pay your bills, and you have sickness in your body. That's when you say, Lord, I still trust you, God. Lord, I still know that you are good, God. Lord, I know that you're in control. I know, Lord, that you are my great shepherd, and you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Amen. Drop your anchor and pray for day to come. Come on, tell somebody, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Verse 30, and as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff into the sea under pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, did you hear that? They put the skiff down, the lifeboat, okay? They put the lifeboat, the little boat, down into the sea under the pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, Paul said that the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. What's going on here? What, why is, what's going, what does all this mean? It means that some of the sailors wanted to abandon ship. <laughs> they were trying to get away. They were pretending to let out the anchors, but they actually were positioning the lifeboat so they could jump in it and, 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 and row away and leave everybody on the boat. And Paul, being a man of God, discerning of the Holy Spirit, he's the only one who realized what was going on. Don't you love being a Christ follower? It's hard to fool people who are Christ followers. It really is. When you're, when you're discerning the Holy Spirit, right? And so Paul says, unless you get these guys back into this boat, we need, every, we need all hands on deck. Unless you get these guys back on this boat, right? We're going to sink, okay? Now, now, Paul was saying, we need all hands on deck. These guys were saying, every man for himself, right? So what's the lesson here? The lesson is, don't jump ship. Because in a storm, listen, the storm doesn't make you better. The storm reveals who you are. That's what was happening here. The storm was revealing Really, what was in the heart of, of, of these sailors. It brought out the worst. Sometimes the storm will bring out the worst in people. It brought out the worst in these. They were supposed to be the ones to save the ship. Instead, they wanted to abandon it. And it brought out, it brought out the worst in the sailors. But you know what? It brought out the best in Paul. Here's Paul. He's an accused fugitive. He's a criminal. He's, he's in chains, Right? And here he is as, a, as, a, as, a, as an inmate, he became the leader on the ship. Not the centurion, not even the captain. Paul, the preacher, the pastor, became the leader on the ship. It brought out the best in Paul, right? Hallelujah. He spoke wisdom to the situation. He had insight, he had clarity, he had authority. And they listened to him and they took direction from him. Your storm, listen, your storm is revealing something about you. Don't be a sailor who's made bitter by the storm, who gets weighed down by disappointment and anger, and who abandons his faith and abandons his duty and abandons his position and abandons his church and jumps ship and just throws everyone aside. Don't be that guy. Don't be that, that woman who says, every man for himself. I don't care about anyone else. I just want to make sure I'm okay, right? Because there's too many doing that today. They jump one ship and they say, well, I'm going to swim over and find another ship. Right? Or I'm going to jump out of this position, out of this commitment, out of this duty, and I'm just going to go over here. And No, no, there's too much of that going on. 
The storm will reveal who you really are. Are you a Paul or you are, are you a sailor who just cares about his own skin? Let this season that you're in embolden your faith. Let it strengthen your resolve. Don't be defined by the storm. Be defined by how you overcame the storm. Did you get that? Look at how this storm distinguished Paul but defeated the sailors. God did not send this storm into your life to destroy you. He sent this storm into this life to define you, to distinguish you. When David encountered Goliath, God wasn't trying to destroy David with Goliath. He was trying to pull faith out of Goliath and uh, out of David and give David an opportunity to distinguish who he was and what his destiny was all about. Had it not been for Goliath, David would have never been the man that we know him to be. Amen? The storm will either make you bitter or better. How many want to be bitter? Oh, I almost got you there, huh? <laughs> yeah. How many want to be better? Amen? Let Lord make us better. Like Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Verse 33. And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day. You have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some nourishment, for this, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. Verse 35, And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, in the midst of the storm. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food for themselves. In the midst of, here's the next lesson. In the midst of your storm, thank God for the bread. Thank God for your bread. Honor him and give him glory for all the good things in your life, despite, despite what's happening to you in, in the storm. Imagine now, Paul is in this boat. The wind is howling. The rain is pounding. The claps of thunder. The lightning striking. Waves are crashing against the boat. The men are huddled down into some corner some way. Some are probably vomiting over the edge of the... And there's Paul in the midst of all that chaos, in the midst of all that, that torment. There he is making a sandwich. <laughs> And he lifts his bread toward heaven. Everybody's panicked. And Paul says, Lord, I thank you for this peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? What is he doing? It sounds crazy. I'll tell you what he's doing. He's being a Christ follower. He's being a Christian. He's being a man of God. Because this is what we do in the storms. This is how we act. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8, Paul says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not, come on, struck down, but not destroyed. No matter what we face, no matter what we suffer, no matter what we endure, we will manifest the life of Jesus in our body and in our life. What is he saying? He's saying in every circumstance and situation, in the worst storms of life, even when we are delivered into death, we're going to manifest Jesus in our life. We're going to glorify Christ. We're going to show the world that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. While everyone else is huddled down on the floor, fearing for their life, we're going to stand up and thank God for the bread that's in our hands. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for this, not Lord for the storm, but despite the storm, because God, you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? Verse 41, last point, then we're done. But striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the prow stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. So it was that they all escaped safely to land. Last point is simply this. Learn to swim. <laughs> 
Seriously. Just because God is in control doesn't mean you won't have to swim. Amen? Yeah, God is sovereign. He said no one's going to die, but they still had to swim. They still had to float on the boards and the boxes, whatever they could find, right? People had to do their part. Yes, God said you'll be saved, but they had to do their part to be saved. Amen? Here's a good rule to follow in the storm. Pray like everything depends on God, but work like everything depends on you. Does that make sense? Yes, God, will God save your marriage? Yes, pray and God will save your marriage, but you got to do your part too. you got to respect your husband and you got to love your wife. Yes? Looking for a job? Yes, God will help you find a job. He'll provide a job. He'll prosper your career. But you know what? you got to do your part too. you got to be diligent. you got to be out there looking for a job. And when you get that job, you got to be the best performer on the team. Amen? Yes? Hope it, retirement, will God take care of you in retirement? You're hoping for God to bless you in retirement? Well, yeah, God wants to bless you in retirement, but you better start saving money now. Hello? Learn how to swim. Come on, tell somebody. you got to swim. you got to swim, right? Will God deliver you from temptation? Absolutely. But you got to start putting yourselves in places where you're being tempted. Amen? It's very practical. Pray like everything depends on God, but work like it all depends on you. I like to say it like this. Yes, God will move your mountain, but don't be surprised when He hands you a shovel. The soldiers tried to kill what God promised to save, but because they prayed like they depended on God, and they swam like it depended on them, they survived. Amen? Let's all stand together. Worship team can join me up here. Now, I don't know what storm you may be in. I don't know what you may be facing right now. Maybe you're in a storm. Maybe you're coming out of a storm. Or maybe you are about (laughs) to enter one. And this one is a warning. It is a preparation. Contrary winds ahead. Be reminded that you need to have a Paul on your boat. You need to lighten the ship. Amen? And you need to pray like it all depends on God, but work like it all depends on you. Father, help us today, God, in the storms and the shipwrecks of life. Lord, we need your grace. We need your grace, God. Some are in a storm right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Some are in a storm right now, Lord. Come on, if that's you, just slip up a hand and say, yeah, contrary winds right now in my life. I'm in a storm. Come on, slip your hand up. Listen, it doesn't mean that you're a sinner or a failure. It means, it could mean that you're in the will of God, just like Paul. You're in the will of God, but the storms are raging against you. Come on, lift up a hand and say, yeah, I got a storm right now. I'm in it right now. Right now, my ship is taken on water. Right now, the bow is being broken. Right now, the stern is being crushed. Right now, I'm running aground. And Lord, I'm reaching out to you. Come on, lift up that other hand and say, yes, Lord God, you're my hope, Lord. You're my hope, Lord. Come on, just reaffirm, Lord God, I believe. Lord, I believe you're with me in my storm. Come on, just reaffirm that, Lord. I trust you, God. I trust you, Lord. You are the God who causes all things to work together for the good in my life. And I'm going to worship you, Lord. And I'm going to glorify you, Lord God. And I'm going to thank you, Lord God, in the midst of this storm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, for those that need to go. God, I know, Lord, there are some that got to get their kids. So, Lord, I want to release them with your blessing. If you need to go and get your kids, you can feel released to go ahead and do that. But for those who want to stay and remain and linger and just worship and just seek your face, Lord, we pray that your presence will touch our lives as we worship you. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. Listen, if you need prayer, if you're in a storm right now and you need prayer, we want to pray for you. Thank you for checking out the Mission Church YouTube channel today. Join us live every Sunday here on this channel or on our website at missionchurch.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any notifications from us in the future. If you'd like to watch the full unedited service, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description box. Support our ministry by clicking on the Give Now link in the same description box or by visiting our website and clicking on the Giving tab at the top of our page. Thanks for visiting today, and we hope to see you again very soon.